Mental Health Transformations Group is a living example of the absolute answer for people who are suffering with mental health struggles. Come and listen to our inspirational message of hope and truth. Become aware of how you're thinking, all right? Because life will throw you a bunch of bad, bad, bad thinking. But if you know you're thinking that, do you have to listen to it? Do you really have to listen to it? Thinking is not obligatory. It's not compulsory. It's not something you have to do. And you can think anything you want to. As long as you know that you're the one who's thinking it. And it was through the three principles that I had an awakening. And my life suddenly, for the first time, well, for the first time, I found tranquility. And that's why I keep coming back to this group. And it is through the three principles that you can come to an understanding that you can push yourself to points of tranquility and peace beyond uh, a place where you ever dreamed would be possible. And I know that because I've experienced I just heard something. I didn't understand what I heard, but I heard something. And my angel, Sean, like that's what happens. Like I actually get goosebumps. That's what happens when we hear truth. When we're being guided back to where we always were anyway. Because I think I, I just knew in that moment that everything was going to be okay and actually everything always had been. And then suddenly I came to this group, these wise, wise people, and then every time I would go, I would just get this amazing feeling that I'd never felt before. And I just would grow to this whole new level. And I mean, at first, my mind was just kind of like, I call it like the busy bees in the, the angry bees in the beehive, and it was so buzzing around. But as I quietened down there, and then that feeling and the connection with everyone, and I've got that experience of that oneness. And then every time, and then I would see it in a new light. And so then I would just kind of, all the worries and the troubles and that would just drop away. And then I could say, yeah, there is this purity in me, in everybody. And then I just thought, this has to go out to the world. When you think a lot of time without interruption, you have a voice in your head that never stops talking, thinking. And yet there is a possibility of realizing field of noting, beingness, which is behind all your thoughts, or it is background for your thoughts, the space in which your thoughts, feelings, sensations arise, and into which your thoughts, feelings, sensations subside. Beingness that is in every one of us is not to achieve it, but to reveal it. Welcome. I am Harry Drabitsky of ACT Training, or Advanced Coaches Training. I am the lead coach of this closed group called Mental Health Transformations. I have personally handpicked each member of the group, all six of them, each one of which have had acute mental health scenarios, such as acute depression, acute anxiety, extreme addiction, fatigue, and a host of other physical and mental scenarios. They all, I want to emphasize this, have been taught by other teachers or other teachings, and all have been exposed to the material by my personal teacher, Sydney Banks, who mentored me on Salt Spring Island. 
the criteria, which is very important of what I look for in each member before asking them to join our group is that they each are extremely wise, but are not recognized by the 3P community, which is interesting. Each one has the ability to soar into the spiritual nature of the principles. And I wanna emphasize it, the spiritual nature of the principles. And of course, each one has experienced a transformational experience, thanks to some of, of what they have seen in mental health. My personal main role is to try to allow them to have the confidence to uncover their own voice. They have been classified as losers and they are the winners of the, of, of the world. And when they uncover their own voice, they soar like the eagles. Their wisdom, there is the strength of our community, not myself. Their stories are the ones that will change the mental health world into a world of hope and a world of seeing what works. I want to share, and we all want to share our message of hope and understanding to the whole world, of which we have been relatively successful in the 3P and non-3P 3 commu 3 community. Thank you and enjoy the rest of this video. I was quite sick as a child, chronic fatigue and a lot of pain. And so I missed a lot of school. Uh, that kind of caused a lot of mental health issues. And I went through different mental health professionals and given diagnosis, uh, kind of told I wouldn't get well. And so I kind of, just kind of live my life the best I could, um, but kind of not much hope really, and getting stuck in my mind all the time and believing everything, and getting overpowered by my thoughts and and so um, with obsessions and that. And then it just happened at the beginning of the lockdown in March that I picked up a book um, by Mara Olsen. And it just really hit me then about how we create the world from ourselves as a projector. And I just really saw something in there that completely shifted my whole view of life actually I wasn't a victim of life I had this power within myself to actually make changes and see that actually I could recover from this I could move in life I did have potential and then I happened to find Sid's name in there and then I checked out the Hawaii lectures and then he said that how we all live in mental health but don't realize it and it was just like wow this is just so amazing and there's just such great feelings in me and, I, and then he was talking about the spiritual and I was always into that anyway and I could just see how much more potential I had and how much more I was than what I'd been told or what I'd believed and what had restricted me in my life. And I didn't have to believe that all my life had been a waste. And so I was listening to loads of his and that and really kind of growing as a person. And then suddenly I came to this group, these wise, wise people, and they were talking about how it was from a spiritual perspective and that when you go to that feeling and that spiritual, that, that is where the healing is. And then every time I would go, I would just get this amazing feeling that I'd never felt before. And I just would grow to this whole new level. And I mean, at first, my mind was just kind of like, I call it like the busy bees in the, the angry bees in the beehive, and it was so buzzing around. But as I quietened down there, and then that feeling and the connection with everyone, and I've got that experience of that oneness. And then every time, and then I would see it in a new light. And so then I would just kind of, all the worries and the troubles and that would just drop away. And then I could say, yeah, there is this purity in me, in everybody. And then I just thought this has to go out to the world because just seeing people in the system and that and seeing how like people are being fouled in that and seeing that actually everyone has this potential to heal. And that why don't people know about this? Why aren't people told about this? And so, I mean, I went from a person who couldn't like before even speak on the phone or was so shy in that. And then when I had this transformation, suddenly I was just this new confident person the gratefulness of finding the principles and finding Sid and finding the group and these powerful people and seeing what's happening in the world and how the world's changing through this understanding and how people who have been told that they have no hope in life actually do have hope. And it's just somebody else's misunderstanding has been projected onto them, which then they've bought into and that you don't have to buy into that. 
you can see and you can get that feeling and that feeling is who we truly are and it's always available to us we just don't know it or we've forgotten it and so sometimes i might think oh i've lost it again but then i remember no you haven't it's always there and you're always going to get it again and whatever happens in life it was there and whatever happens i'm going to be okay and i don't have to things happen to me in the world and let it destroy me or let it make me think I'm hopeless and that I know that actually I will go back to it and I can cope with whatever happens to me. My story would be more or less the same as Joe. I was extremely anxious at school, same as Joe. Ended up having panic attacks, didn't know they were panic attacks. It can, you know, it comes back, you know what I mean? Because I was eternally searching. What's life about? What's life about? What's life about? My life is miserable. Don't like my life. And this, this you know, I mean, I'm not saying that. I can have amazing insights at times, you know? And I can wake up and I can still have huge problems, but... The difference is that I know now I'm creating my experience. And how am I creating my experience? By, by the, the use of thought. If we can look at thought like this, you know, if we could ask someone just this one thing, you, do you think? And they reply, yeah. Of course, I think, you know, I'm, you know all right, we're all thinking. Do you know you're thinking? Yeah, I know I'm thinking, all right. So at some point, we come to this place where we're thinking. So you can say to a person, if you know you're thinking, right, can you change the way you think even? Something as simple as that. Yeah, but it's not so easy. It's not so easy. You don't understand, you know. Okay, well, let's look at it like this. You know, you, this is what I came with yesterday. You know, just for one moment, just out of the day, just one moment, all right? Just even if you're watching the television, ask yourself, what am I thinking about? Because you can be watching a television program, but you can be thinking about something that happened during the day that really upset you, really brought you down, made your mood low. But be aware that that's happening. Be aware that, that you're having these thoughts. And so... If you're aware you're having these thoughts, all right, then you're the one who's got the power to observe what you are thinking. And when you know you have the power to observe what you are thinking, you can watch. You can watch what you are thinking. Just take that time, I would say to anyone. Take that time to ask yourself, look at my thinking. Oh, I'm thinking this. I'm thinking bad thoughts. I'm thinking good thoughts. Become aware of how you're thinking, all right? Because life will throw you a bunch of bad, bad, bad thinking. But if you know you're thinking that, do you have to listen to it? Do you really have to listen to it? Thinking is not obligatory. It's not compulsory. It's not something you have to do. You go to school, like I said, when you're a kid. And you're taught this and you're taught that. And that is the way of life. That's the way of life. This is the way life must be. But you have an opportunity now. You have an opportunity. By the three principles, mind, consciousness, and thought. You're conscious. 
you have the mind little computer and you can think and you can think anything you want to as long as you know that you're the one who's thinking The impact of the three principles on my life has been seismic. It's been enormous. Um, I'm a 58-year-old man, and I lived my life um, up to that age in a constant state of anxiety, experiencing anxiety attacks, uh, which I took medication for and became addicted to. I also became addicted to pain medication. And, and it was through the three principles that I had an awakening. And my life suddenly, for the first time, well, for the first time, I found tranquility. And that's why I keep coming back to this group. Now, as far as oneness goes, this is a famous a fabulous analogy regarding oneness in quantum physics and the phenomena known as uh, quantum entanglement. Uh, what is entanglement? Entanglement says, and it's a pr proven thing, and it's been observed, that uh, individual particles there are particles like electrons that do not exist as individual particles. Uh, they exist as pairs and they're inseparable from each other. And uh, this has been observed to a point that um, observing the behavior of two entangled quantum particles defies the known laws of physics in that if you've got in it, let's take, imagine the two particles, the two Ps, which are millions of miles apart. Uh, one P is spinning in a clockwise direction, another P in a counterclockwise direction. If you were to change the spin of one P to the reverse direction, the effect on the other P would to change the spin on that in the opposite direction. So there's some form of communication from one P to the other P. The distance between them means that that communication to carry out that change must have gone faster than the speed of light, which current says you can't go faster than the speed of light. But in fact, that information has passed faster than the speed of light. The reason it has done so is because of oneness. Because those particles, although they may seem to exist millions of miles apart, are actually in a different dimension in the same place. The, realize, the realization that all things are one single divine thought broke up into pieces by our conscious states and the illusions of mankind. Uh, we've forgotten to wake up to see what is rather than what isn't. Because what we see really isn't real. And that is the thing that in the three principles we talk about as the great illusion that what we what we see as being true reality is really an illusion and what is real can only be found by looking within and seeing how beautiful and spiritual you really are. What is within you is the thing that is really real. Look within yourself and it is through the three principles that you can come to an understanding that you can push yourself to 
finds the tranquility and peace beyond uh, a place where ever rain would be possible. And I know that because I've experienced it. If you do not learn that you can be aware, conscious of your thoughts, feelings, sensations, then you are trapped in your thoughts and by your thoughts. People are so identified with their thoughts that is all they know of the world and of who they are. There is a source, field, beingness, like a screen in everybody. That which everything appears to, that is beyond the thinking mind, mental mechanism. And it is basic and simple. Recognizing something that already is, Recognizing something that doesn't need to be created. When you think a lot of time without interruption, you have a voice in your head that never stops talking, thinking. And yet there is a possibility of realizing field of noting. Noting. Beingness, which is behind all your thoughts or it is background for your thoughts, the space in which your thoughts, feelings, sensations arise, and into which your thoughts, feelings, sensations subside. Beingness that is in every one of us is not to achieve it, but to reveal it. Revealing of something that is already here, that is underlying isness in between two thoughts, two words, images, sentences. For example, at this moment when speaking stops, Silence is present and speaking starts again. So before there was an empty space and you were just aware or you are not even aware of it or just peripherally aware of it because all your attention is absorbed by the voice in the head, by the mental mechanism activity. was experiencing uh, clinical depression, social anxiety, OCD, emetophobia, um, just uh, I had periods in my life where I couldn't leave my bed. I had periods in my life where I didn't eat. And so then um, about four years ago, I just kind of stumbled across a video on YouTube and um, I just heard something. I didn't understand what I heard, but I heard something. And my angel, Sean, like that's what happens. Like I actually get goosebumps. That's what happens when we hear truth, when we're being guided back to where we always were anyway. And I remember crying. I don't know why. If anyone had said, you know, Nikki, what's wrong? I, I don't think I could have, I don't think I had words to explain why I was crying. And the tears weren't sadness or disappointment it is with just pure joy 
because I think I, I just knew in that moment that everything was going to be okay and actually everything always had been. In order for us to return, in order for us to come back in touch with our true self, there needs to be space between. Again, the space between is the quiet. It's the silence. And in that silence, like the two move further apart and our human self it's like it's in the distance and we're kind of floating like an angel above and we can just look down and see and we laugh like I laugh at myself I still get caught up and I still struggle and suffer but in the quiet the space grows and I I look down and I'm kind of like there I go again being human, but it's okay because I'm up here. And, and when I'm up here, I can soar. When I, when I know that I'm getting caught up in my human experience, like, and not just like, it's okay to get caught up in our human experience in the moment, but, but when we take that moment and then we bring it with us, like we carry it with us and we, we, you know, we think about it and, and nothing can hurt me there. And I'm not in danger of anything there. And everything is moment to moment there. Like when I talk to people now about this understanding, I don't really, you know, we were talking about it before, I don't really talk about mind, thought and consciousness. And because, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like the thing to speak about. Like, I want to have a conversation with you about who you really are. Did you know, like, who are you before thought? I hadn't, I hadn't, I don't think I'd ever really thought about that. So before the failure, before the person that has no confidence, before the, the person with no sex, self-esteem that's unsuccessful, that, you know, um, can't leave her house there, bef before all of that, who are you, Nikki? I can't know, like, who am I before all of that? Oh, like, I, I want to I wanna stay with her. 